Yo, you want to hear how I lost $11,000 slanging t-shirts? Let's talk about it. Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching The Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. He taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you got to do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open. Listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there, and I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it. Fat Man Scoop, Big Brando! Let's go! What's happening, everybody? Boy, Big Brando, and today let's talk about me wasting and losing $11,000 selling t shirts. Now, first off, let me start by saying I'm not going to put any company names out here in this video because I'm not in the business to bash another business. This was just a bad business decision on my end, and I can't blame nobody but myself. So this happened about 15, 18 years ago, something like that. I was a young, hungry, eager t-shirt business owner. I was walking around the Impressions Expo. This is back when Impressions was called ISS. That was the trade show name. It was out here in Long Beach, still is in Long Beach. Walking around, looking at everything that they had to offer. At this time, like I said, 15 plus years ago, DTG was a new hot thing. So if you went to the Impressions Expo this year and you've seen how many DTF printers were there, Imagine that, but DTG printers. So you still had your screen print guys. You had a few vinyl companies out there. You had a couple transfer companies out there, but DTG was the new biggest, hottest thing out. Every single demo that I seen with the DTG printer was eye-opening to me. I love the technology. I love the ease of use. I love the possibilities. So I was sold. Gathered up all the information that I could. I got all the samples that I could. I watched the whole process. I understood what was going on. I talked to a bunch of different companies. So once I brought all that back home, continued to read up on all this stuff. There wasn't too many videos on YouTube showing the process of talking about it like there is now. This was still very new to the industry and only a select few shops had these printers already in place that I was aware of. There could have been people all over the country doing it, but for myself, no local shops had DTG printers or the capability to do so. So that whole year, I was doing my research, trying to figure out what printer I wanted to get, who had the cheapest printer, what made sense for my business. So after countless phone calls and emails throughout the year, the next ISS trade show that came up the following year, I was ready to buy, man. And within that year, DTG elevated like crazy. So now more people had printers and more people had stuff. There's people selling inks, pre-treat, different size printers, these printers printed fast. These ones had a bigger allowable print space. It was crazy. So I pulled the trigger, man. $11,000 for a printer. Now it was just a printer, no pre-treat setup, no fancy stand, just the printer and the RIP software. That was it, $11,000. Now the company that I bought it from, they were stoked, man. When we're emailing back and forth and talking right after that ISS trade show, man. Oh, your business is gonna be booming. You're not gonna be able to turn this printer off. You're gonna be making so much money, blah, blah, blah. That was it. Never heard one bad thing about the printer. Got the printer in, got it set up. All right, how do I run this thing? Oh, here's a couple videos here. Here's a pamphlet. This is how you're supposed to do it. It's how you set it up. Maintenance, or what they called maintenance. The whole process, start to finish. All right, how do I use this RIP software? Oh, you know what? Here's an instruction manual on how to use the RIP software. If you ever need anything, reach out, blah, blah, blah. No real training came with it. That was my first mistake because I didn't know what the hell I was getting myself into. Now, if you ever DTG'd a t-shirt before, there's a process that goes down. It's not just load up the shirt, get it going. At this time, back then, they had a lot of t-shirts already pre-treated that they would load onto the machine for demo purposes so then they could just start printing. They didn't show the whole process. I didn't even know how to correctly apply pre-treat. And if you don't know what pre-treat is, kind of like starch. This is how my understanding is. If you ever starched up some jeans, like when you crease up some jeans, or if you ever starched up a shirt or something to get some crispy lines in it, that's basically what the pre-treat is like. Pre-treat, you spray onto the t-shirt or you can brush it on the shirt, however you apply it, it's on you. And then that settles in onto the t-shirt, dries on or cures on, however you want to say it. Now it's ready to receive the ink on top of the pre-treated part, because if you don't pre-treat the shirt, the print doesn't really adhere to it. it you have to put that pre-treatment on there. So back then, this is what they used to push. Ring spun t-shirts. You only could put ring spun t-shirts through your DTG printer. Out of everybody's testing, everybody agreed that ring spun t-shirts were the best to DTG on. So I bought a ton of ring spun t-shirts. And if you ever felt a ring spun t-shirt, it's fairly soft, but a lot of my clients weren't into that. But still, that's what I needed for this printer. 
Let's get it going. So at the time, I'm pre-treating the t-shirt with a spray bottle. Pour the pre-treat into a regular spray bottle and misting it over the t-shirt, cure it onto the shirt. Once I figured out how to load the shirt with the frame onto the actual platen to send it in, I gotta figure out the rip software. It took me forever to figure out the rip software. Now, all this time of trial and error, trying to learn, I didn't understand that if the machine is just sitting there with ink in the lines, that ink over time will dry out into the lines, dry out into the head. Nobody told me that. I've never heard anything about that. It was always, you turn it on, throw the shirt on, boom. That's what I seen at the Impressions Expo. That's how good the salesmen were doing the demos where it sold me on it, right? So I'm constantly hitting up the company like, hey man, how do I get the RIP software? How do I get my design to the printer? And they're like, read the instruction manual. Everything's laid out in there. I still needed a little bit of training because I don't learn good through just by reading the manual. I'm like, visually, I I need to see something going on. Or if somebody's telling me, hey, look, this is how you do it, I can remember, all right, boom, 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 these are the steps. Wasn't the case, it was a, hey, read that manual. We sent you a PDF file, things like, I don't know, 110 pages, something like that, read that all the way through and you'll learn how to use it. So that was a big issue, trying to get the rip software to talk to the printer so I could send some designs. So once I figure all that out, months go by, man. It, it took me a long time just to get this, to print one t-shirt every day of trying it out, figuring it out. Once I started actual print on a shirt, did a small little logo, I think it was six inches by I think like 10 or something like that, nothing crazy. Loaded that baby up, boom. Now once you print the shirt, you gotta take it out, you gotta cure the ink on it, right? So that's where the heat press comes in. Take the shirt off, cure that baby on there. Said, oh man, proud of myself, had a really good shirt. Threw it in the wash, everything washed off. Nothing held but like a faded white grayish ghost of the design. None of the colors stuck, nothing. So I take a picture, send it to the company. They're like, oh man, you didn't pre-treat the shirt correctly. So I'm like, how am I supposed to pre-treat? This is what I did, I sprayed it on, that was it. They're like, nah, the ink has to adhere to the pre-treat or however it's supposed to work. So I'm like, damn, am I supposed to soak this shirt in the pre-treat? So I do that, soak that baby down. But now the shirt feels stiff. Like I said, it's kind of like starch, man, where the shirt where I pre-treated the whole front of it felt stiff to the touch, but the print held on. The print was on at that time, but I didn't like the way it felt. So I get a couple prints under my belt and I'm kind of happy with what I'm doing. Now now I'm using like this little pump action uh, spray thing like what the guys use to like wash cars with. Pump it up and then you pull the trigger and it's just a continuous spray. That's what I use to pre-treat the shirt. So I'm soaking these things down, running it through. Then a few days go by, I don't print any shirts. And then now I'm getting crazy like banding and like these like stripes on my print. I can't figure it out. I'm doing the self maintenance on the machine, but nothing's working. That's when I find out my print head is clogged. There's like a little piece of dried up ink on the print head that it's not pushing the ink through. So every time it goes by, it's like a regular printer, right? So every time it does a line, it's not laying down the full amount of ink because it's being blocked by the print head. There's like a little bit of dried up ink clogged up in there. I don't know that. So I'm sending prints through and every time I do it, I'm wasting shirts, I'm wasting ink, I'm wasting time. Going through, not working, not working. So I hit them up. Hey man, my printer's not printing. This is the results I'm getting. It's like, oh man, it could be a print head. You might need to replace it. I could get one shipped out to you. This is how much it costs. Now at the time, the print head I think was like $500, $550 or something like that. And this is before I knew what print heads they were using. This is before I knew what the hell was going on. So I wait around for that new print head. Bingo, print head comes in. They give me some instructions on how to replace the thing. Put that one in and it lasts a week and a half. Shit you not, a week and a half. Printing, one day I don't print. Then I'm printing, one day I don't print. Clogged up again. I'm like, wait, what? By this time I wasted so much ink, so much time, that now I have to replenish my inks. And for these small little bladders of ink, $300 each, each color. So I had to get white, black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And white, you use a lot of white because that's the under base that like white goes by pretty quick. So I got to order inks and a new print head. Now I get all that stuff in load up the new inks, install the new print head, get back to printing. So now I'm running this thing almost daily because I'm just testing a bunch of shirts out, testing a lot of designs out. I haven't really sold anything to make any money with it yet because I'm still trying to figure out how to use this thing. And think like a month or two goes by, print head goes out again. Getting the same thing, those little lines, those little lines kicking my ass, man. So I hit them up I'm like, man, what's up with these print heads? How come I'm getting, you know, it's getting jammed up and these things keep going down. And they're like, oh, well, where's your printer set up? I'm like, it's in my garage. Like, does your garage get hot? Is it 
cold. I said, it's a garage, man. So they said, oh man, if the humidity's off where your printer's at, that's gonna affect the lines, that's gonna affect the print head. So I either try to get it to yourself a humidifier so you could control the humidity around the printer. I'm like, wait, what? Like, yeah, that's why it's happening so much because the humidity around the printer is gonna affect the print head. I'm like, man, what the hell? So now I'm trying to find a humidifier to put next to it and I'm trying to keep the humidity at a certain number and I haven't even made no money with the printer yet. So when people come to me and say, hey man, what do you think about DTG? And you guys hear me talk some crazy stuff it's because I know through experience, man, I know what it's like to buy a printer from these companies and waste my money, man. I went almost a whole year without selling one t-shirt that was printed off that DTG printer. And like I said, bad decision on my part, not from the company. The company sold me a DTG printer. I didn't know everything that came with it because nobody was talking about the bad that comes with it, right? Nobody told me about this whole humidity thing and nobody told me about daily maintenance. Nobody told me about running this thing every day to make sure the lines stay nice and clean and the head stays clean. Nobody told me that white ink clogs up these print heads like no other. Nobody told me that. Nobody was talking about that. And there wasn't this kind of information on YouTube back then. The salesman is just trying to sell you the printer. And yeah, maybe 15 years went by and now these printers are a little bit better, who knows? But for myself, I've had DTG printers. Once I figured out how to do it, my partner built a DTG printer so he knew everything about it, ins and outs. So if something needed to be replaced, he knew exactly what to replace and how to do it because he built one from the ground up. But if I didn't have that, that thing's a money pit, man. It's just constantly dumping money expensive consumables, print heads are going out. And now the DTG companies are marking up these print heads like crazy. And it's just an Epson print head, that's all it is. So what we're doing was we're buying refurbished Epson printers just to bust the print head out. So then we had them on deck. If the print heads ever went out, we could replace them pretty quick. That was the game before, but now people got privy to that and now people are buying them up. You can't even find refurbished Epsons anymore. It's just crazy to myself. So when a lot of these people talk about DTF now and, and how come you don't have printer and like I said, man, I understand how the game works, man. I personally like to buy into a company that backs their stuff up. That was my first mistake was I was just going based off of price. And I was like, yo, man, for 11 grand, I could get this printer right here. At the time, one of the cheapest ones out. Easy call, that's who I was trying to go with. But I didn't do no research on the company. I didn't do no research on other people that own these machines. I was going based off of what I seen in the demo and the false promises that were made to me from the salesman, that was it. So before you get trapped up in the DTF, DTG, that whole thing, like I said, none of these companies are bad. You just have to know exactly what you're getting yourself into. That's why you never seen a DTG printer on my channel ever. And I own them, I have them in my shops. I've had experience with DTG for years. Like I said, my experience started like 18 years ago with DTG and I still don't promote it to anybody because that thing's a money pit, man. I lost so much money with these printers that I would hate to put a small business into debt because I'm selling them false hope. Like, man, look what this printer could do right here. Look how easy it is to load this thing up and it'll spit out the print. There's so much that goes into it that a lot of people don't talk about. And to see the price tag on that is crazy because if you're basing your whole business around that DTG printer, it's hard to dig yourself out of that hole once you actually bought into that machine, man. So for myself, anytime I buy any piece of equipment now, that taught me a very valuable lesson to buy into a company that backs their machines. Not somebody that's just gonna say, hey, read the manual. I need to make sure customer service is gonna help me troubleshoot my issues so we can get this thing going again, you know what I mean? Since then, I haven't found a company that's down to do that. And that's why I don't promote DTG and DTF and stuff like that, because there's a lot that goes into those machines that's either not set on YouTube or people aren't posting the videos of their DTF printer going down or DTG printer going down. Nobody wants to promote the bad about it. One, that makes for horrible content. Two, that shines a negative light on the actual machine and printer. And like I said, it's just not good content. But if you don't know the bad that comes with the good, then you're not seeing the whole scope of things and potentially putting people in debt, man. So before you buy these printers and you buy into this stuff, think about the company that you're buying into. Make sure they back their machine. Make sure their customer service is there for you and not just there to get the sale and understand what the consumables are, what you need to run that machine, how much the inks cost, how many prints can you get off of a bladder of ink or a cartridge of ink or however they sell these inks. Understand what maintenance is like. Understand if you have to be somewhat mechanical inclined to actually change stuff out and turn a screwdriver and figure out how to get these parts in and out of here. All of that stuff, part of it, man. Don't put yourself in a debt. Like I say all the time, don't go broke trying to get rich, man. That's why for myself, you all see me, man. I talk about if you're gonna go 
the DTF route, buy the transfers from somebody that already got the printer so you don't have that headache, man. Hopefully you guys can learn from my mistake. And that was a hefty price tag of a mistake. But also now you guys understand why I don't ever talk about DTG printers and DTF printers on my channel. I don't want to put you guys into debt. If you guys got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments for me. Follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.